Humanity is a living paradox. Through cooperation and the power of reason, people have created new and incredible technologies. But with every major leap forward, these modern tools are also used to kill. We have covered the history of execution several times in past episodes. But there is one execution method we have not explored. It is a uniquely American invention, normally reserved for the worst offenders. Today we are going to learn how electrocution was used to extinguish the lives of criminals. The History of Electricity People were using electricity long before they had any idea what it was. But for most of human history, it wasn't seen as a force of nature. Mostly it was a trick used by fish and eels. Ancient Egyptian texts from 2750 BCE mention electric fish. They were called Thunderer of the Nile, and the Egyptians believed they protected other fish. Greeks and Romans also encountered these creatures. They thought that the ability to deliver shocks had valid medical uses. For thousands of years, people who had severe headaches or gout were told to touch electric fish and eels. Supposedly, the electric discharges could relieve pain for a time. In 1600, an English physician named William Gilbert performed experiments to learn more about the nature of electricity. He learned how magnetism worked and even figured out the earth had a solid iron core. William Gilbert also thought that electricity and magnetism were two entirely different things. Future scientists would prove this idea wrong. Throughout the 1600s and 1700s, various people helped unlock the mysteries of electricity. This also included one of the founding fathers of the United States. In 1746, Benjamin Franklin began experimenting with electricity. He was the first to discover that it contained positive and negative charges. In 1748, he built the first capacitor, which consisted of glass plates with lead plates between them. In 1749, Benjamin Franklin really wanted to make electricity useful, so he devised a way to use it for cooking turkeys. Franklin also noted that the birds cooked in this manner were very tender. In 1752, he performed the famous experiment of flying a kite in a lightning storm. The kite was flown in a storm cloud where it was able to acquire electric charge. This was transferred to a metal key attached to a wire, and from there the charge could be stored in a device called a Leyden jar. In 1791, Luigi Galvani discovered that electricity was used by neurons in the brain. In the early 19th century, a series of discoveries began to finally tie everything together. Michael Faraday created the first electric motor. George Ohm discovered how electric circuits work in 1827. Finally, in 1861, James Clerk Maxwell discovered that electricity and magnetism were the same force. By the late 19th century, scientists knew how to create electricity. They knew how to transport it from place to place. And they also knew that the human nervous system used it to function. It would take another series of accidents to convince those in power that electrocution was an acceptable way to kill criminals. Electric Death Starting in the late 1870s, electric lights became a feature in cities throughout the United States. These were called arc lights and were incredibly bright. They also required high voltage to function. Although electricity was being used, scientists and engineers still didn't understand everything about it. They didn't realize that it was a good idea to connect electrical systems to the ground. Today, most of our electrical systems try to discharge current into the earth instead of people. There were many casualties before this lesson became obvious. Newspapers in the 1880s began running stories about people who came in contact with electricity. The victims died suddenly and mysteriously. But one accident would turn the wheels of justice in a new direction. On the night of August 7, 1881, a drunken dock worker started remembering his visit to the nearby power station. 
When he touched the railing, he felt a strange tingling sensation. He liked it. In his drunken stupor, the dock worker thought it would be great to experience this again. He broke into the power plant and touched a generator. Death arrived instantly. His sudden demise would inspire the creation of the electric chair. The coroner who investigated the dock worker's death spoke of it at a conference the next year. In the audience was Alfred P. Southwick. He was a steamboat engineer, inventor, and a dentist. And he was inspired to learn more about how electricity could kill. Alfred teamed up with physician George E. Fell. Together they captured and electrocuted hundreds of stray dogs. Yay. After developing a reliable procedure, Alfred then tried to figure out how he could use the same process to kill a person. Alfred Southwick published his results in scientific journals in 1882 and 1883. He proposed that electricity should be used to kill criminals rather than hanging. He also created a device for this purpose. Alfred took a dental chair and modified it to restrain a person. Then he added electrodes to deliver deadly current. Within a few short years, his invention would kill its first human victim. Designing the Chair Throughout the 1880s, the United States kept hanging criminals. And they kept making mistakes, too. Victims sometimes strangled slowly over several minutes rather than dying instantly. In a few cases, misjudgments resulted in the criminal's head being removed by the rope. In 1886, New York Governor David B. Hill created a commission to develop a more humane method of execution. One of the members of that commission was Alfred P. Southwick. Unsurprisingly, the commission suggested that Alfred's electric chair should be used to kill criminals. Next, it was necessary to find someone to build this deadly device. Nobody knew what kind of electricity to use, so the commission decided to ask Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was building generators that delivered direct current, or DC, power. His rival, George Westinghouse, used alternating current, or AC, power. The two men were in fierce competition with each other. Thomas Edison didn't like losing. Never one to miss an opportunity, Edison suggested that AC power should be used to kill the condemned. It would demonstrate that Westinghouse produced unsafe equipment, and, thanks to Alfred's experiments on dogs, there was little doubt AC power would do the job. Now that they knew which type of electricity to use, the designers had to figure out just how much current it would take to kill a human. They turned to animals again for the answers. But this time, dogs wouldn't be enough. They needed much larger creatures for these experiments. A discharge of 750 volts AC power was used to end the lives of four calves and a lame horse. It proved that electricity could kill anything, including humans. It also ended up being a public relations problem for George Westinghouse. Newspapers ran stories pointing out that he had three times the current required to kill a horse running through wires over their heads. Ultimately, the commission suggested that the electric chair should consist of a wooden chair with restraints for the prisoner. Electrodes would be attached to the head and middle of the back. They would use 1,500 volts of AC power from a Westinghouse generator to complete the deed. In 1890, it would be used for the first time. The First to Die William Kimmler was living in New York in 1888. He was an alcoholic and a peddler. Soon, he would become a murderer. On March 29th, William awoke after a full night of drinking. He began arguing with his girlfriend and accused her of stealing from him. He also accused her of cheating. Then William walked into the barn, grabbed an axe, and killed her with it. He was arrested for the crime and was put on trial. The sentence was death, and it would be delivered by the electric chair. On August 6, 1890, it was finally time for William to say farewell. He awoke at daylight and put on a suit and some nice shoes. 
He was led into a crowded room and strapped to a wooden chair. William was allowed to speak his final words. Gentlemen, I wish everyone all the good luck in the world. I believe I am going to a good place. The papers have been saying a lot of stuff that ain't so. That's all I have to say. The warden attached electrodes to his head. He said, Goodbye, William, then instructed the executioner to flip the switch. As the electricity coursed through his body, William's shoulders pulled back. After 17 seconds, the current was turned off. Two physicians decided that William was dead. But a few moments later, somebody yelled, Great God! He is alive! They started delivering current into William's body again, and this time it didn't stop until he was truly and finally dead. But it was a gruesome sight. It took the body hours to cool off, and for some time smoke was pouring from William's singed skin. When asked about his opinion on the execution, George Westinghouse said, They could have done a better job with an axe. Edison was more optimistic about the future of executions. He replied, I think when the next man is placed in the chair to suffer the death penalty that death will be accomplished instantly. It was clear to everyone that the electric chair was here to stay. Cruel and Unusual The electric chair soon became the preferred way to kill criminals. By the early 1900s, it would become the almost exclusive method of capital punishment in the United States. And before it fell out of favor, it would be used to kill a total of 4,374 prisoners. The 20th century would also prove that Thomas Edison's optimism may have been misplaced. Death did not always arrive instantly for the condemned. The problems were obvious almost from the beginning. In 1903, three brothers were scheduled to be executed. They were all convicted of murdering their uncle. The siblings were brought into the execution room one after the other until all three appeared to be dead. Their bodies were placed on a table in the prison autopsy room when suddenly one of the brothers began breathing. He was rushed back to the electric chair and was given more shocks to finish the job. Women may not have had equal rights in the 1920s, but they were certainly not protected from electric death. Ruth Snyder became the first woman to be executed in the electric chair in 1928. She was sentenced to death for killing her husband. As more and more criminals were subjected to this fate, mistakes also became more common. Juveniles were also not protected from this gruesome end. In 1946, Willie Francis was 16 years old. He lived in Louisiana and was convicted of killing a pharmacist that employed him. He was sentenced to death and was taken to the electric chair on May 3rd. It was later discovered that the prison guard and inmate that set up the electric chair were drunk. So when current was delivered to Willie instead of death, it only brought pain. He yelled, Take it off! Take it off! Let me breathe! After the botched execution, Willie's case was taken to the U.S. Supreme Court. His lawyer argued that trying to execute Willie again was cruel and unusual punishment. The court disagreed. Willie Francis was taken back to the chair on May 9, 1947. This time, he did not survive the experience. By the 1950s, prisons were much more proficient at using electricity to kill. Higher voltage was used, and more strict procedures kept errors to a minimum. But humans are not perfect, and the mistakes continued. In 1997, Pedro Medina was executed in Florida. As electricity was delivered to his body, his head burst into flames. A subsequent investigation concluded that Pedro was dead before this happened, but spectators were traumatized by the event. As the 20th century came to an end and the new millennium began, the electric chair would finally fall out of favor. Decline There was a total of 84 
botched executions that used the electric chair. A number of these were documented by the press, which in turn raised public awareness. The courts didn't think it was cruel, but many others did. Government officials began to feel pressure to find a less gruesome way to kill. In the 1980s, a new method of execution began to take over. Instead of subjecting criminals to electric shocks, they were killed with an injection of lethal drugs. We have an entire episode dedicated to this topic, if you want to learn more. Legally, the chair could not be retired right away. The criminals who were sentenced to die in the electric chair had to have their sentences carried out. The last time an inmate was killed by electricity without being given a choice was on May 10th, 2002, in Alabama. More than a decade earlier, Linda Leon Block had an unfortunate encounter with two police officers. She began shooting at them and killed one. For this, she was sentenced to death in the electric chair. Some states still allow the electric chair to be used if lethal injection drugs are not available. In most parts of the United States, it isn't allowed under any circumstances, but a few allow the inmate to choose between lethal injection and the electric chair. In 2018, several inmates in Tennessee chose the electric chair over lethal injection. They were aware that if lethal injection went wrong, it could last for several painful minutes. These victims preferred to die quickly and thought the electric chair worked better. Lee Hall was one of these inmates. He was convicted of killing his former girlfriend. Lee poured gasoline on her, then set her on fire. He was led to the electric chair in December of 2019. Lee was allowed to speak his final words. People need to learn forgiveness and love and make the world a better place. A shroud was placed over his head and the electric current was delivered to his body. Lee Hall died instantly, but steam poured out of his head for some time. Since 2019, nobody else has chosen this method of death, and most states would no longer allow it under any circumstances, but in some parts of the country it remains a viable option. No other country in the world currently uses electricity to kill criminals. The electric chair, like most methods of execution, seems like it should work well, but people are involved and they make mistakes. The lucky victims of botched executions with the electric chair experienced extreme discomfort before the end finally arrived. The less fortunate, such as Willie Francis, were subjected to pain and terror, then survived, and then had to face the same fate again later. Is the electric chair too cruel a fate for the condemned? Do people convicted by governments have it coming in some way? Tell us about your thoughts in the comments below. If you somehow enjoyed this episode, then please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel if you want to learn more. And please be aware that we make episodes on a wide range of topics other than executions. We also have a Patreon page if you want to help us out. There is merchandise on our website as well. The links are in the video description below. Thank you for watching Bad Things in History. Have you ever thought about how you want to die when your time comes? Or how you absolutely don't want it to happen? It's coming, and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Only delay the inevitable and, if you're unlucky, influence the intensity of discomfort. You want your life to end with dignity at the very least. Unfortunately, it's not all up to you. People, groups, and governments rob people of life every single day. When one person kills another, it's often called murder. When nations kill thousands, it's given the sanitized label of war to scrub the stink off it. And when governments single out individuals, it's execution. And the stink is removed by stripping away the label of human being and replacing it with criminal. The dignity of personhood is stripped away in the process.